Hey everyone, this is JM from Casuals. Today's video is going to be a beginner's guide for Art of Conquest. I'm going to give you some of the most important tips and cover the basics for this amazing game. So if you're just getting started and want to know the best stuff to do at the beginning, just keep watching. So my first tip is going to be about quests, daily quests and activities that you have to do every day to get a lot of value. So the first one can be found here in this little book if you click. So as you see on the side, there are four different things here. So quests are basically things that you have no time limit. You can just do and basically by playing the game, it will just happen and just add some extra reward. As you can see here, just completing some tactic school levels, gathering some map stuff, diamonds and all that kind of stuff. So this is pretty basic. It will just happen as you go. Nothing specific that you have to do, but looking at it can gaze, it basically gives you an idea of like what you should be doing next as it's kind of like logical progression. So kind of pay attention to it. Now here activity, this is something that resets daily. Now this is amazing. If you look at the reward here, it's obviously bigger and bigger reward as you get further in. Now these tokens here are what you want to be getting every day because this is what you're going to use to unlock champion, especially as a free to play. So you want to get there at least every day. Once you unlock level uh, 12 castle, you get here as well. So, you know, it's it's starting to be quite an amount of a good reward. This battle bit basically helps you pillage dungeon and saves you a lot of time. So you want to do all of this every day as soon as you can. You get some runes for free and you also get some uh, of these items right here. Now, there's... A lot of reward here and basically again it's playing the game so doing the void borrowing some units deploying a dragon like it's all stuff that you will be doing every day um, I'm gonna go through some of it in the video so that you know exactly what it involves but as you can see I've done mine is gonna reset so I would always say when you can when you are online focus on this do this every day don't let these chests go unopened you have to do this this is every day a lot of value now the sign-in bonus basically you just do by signing in so just make sure not to miss a day just sign in every day because you can see you get some Lenari for free here and eventually you get even some of this which uh, this is very valuable this is worth a lot of uh, Lenari so and even some speed up some XP so it's really it's free you just have to log in so just make sure to open your game at least once every day. And now the pact, this is a kind of a weekly series of quests. Uh, as you see, I've finished mine. You basically have five different levels of quests. So it gets harder and harder, but it is, again, just playing the game. So borrowing stuff, delivering resource, transmuting equipment, house income, training group. It's always the same thing. And you and one other player on your server will be matched together. You can try and get some of your active friends because it will help you do it faster, basically. And you basically just do the quest every day. You can help each other out. So this is something that you have to make sure that it's done. Because if you look here, that's a lot of speed up. Like these are pretty big reward. Like look at all of this. Like this is insane. That, that's like, that's value like crazy. You do not want to go one week without having done this. So make sure this is done. So basically this whole quest panel, this is what you have to do. Activity and pact. You have to do this every day and every week. This is something that basically gives you all the value. The longer you play, the stronger you'll get just by being active. It's very rewarding for free-to-play players as well as any other kind of players. Just play the game. It's basically simple like that. So just try and basically I would say, you know, if you go in here and you look at the pack, some of the, the pack is basically uh, training troops. So when you start this event or this uh, quest, Try and be training troops right afterwards. Just finish it quickly. You don't need to train a lot of troops for it to complete. So if you're going to collect your house income in your alliance, basically just before you collect, start this quest, then collect it. You know, it's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, like it's just stuff that you'll be doing, but just try and have the quest started before you do that stuff anyways. So before you go and get all your resources on the map, click on this, start it, then do it. Now as well, when you are in a new kingdom, you'll have this little book here if you click on it. So basically it's called the seven blessings. There's seven days worth of uh, quests. It's kind of like more advanced quests, but stuff that you'll be doing anyways. And obviously the origin stone is the big reward at the end, but all of these rewards here are very good. You get like a set for Vega here. Uh, you get a like egg for a dragon. You get a special mount that lasts 30 days. So this is stuff that you want to do. Now, if I look here, you see that it's basically get your stronghold level five, clear some dungeons. And here is like do the tactic trainer and stuff. So just make sure to pay attention to what you have to do and then just go and do it. 
Uh, of course, it gets a bit harder as time progresses. Uh, like Abyss Stage 10, which is uh, like when you have the dragon, so you have to be uh, level 10 castle, uh, which should take you only a few days, if even if you don't spend anything at all. And then it gives you like uh, dragon stuff, and this is a lot of valuable resources, as you can see. And when this one opens, I'm sure I'm going to have more and more difficult, but very attainable quests. You have 14 days total, uh, basically, and there's 7 days of quests. So you really don't have to rush like crazy, but you have to pay attention to what it asks you to do and do it. So if it asks you to go in your tactic trainer, well, go in your city and go here. And here's the tactic trainer. Do what it asks you to do. Same for anything research or castle. Just make sure to prioritize the castle level to the level that it asks you to do. And as well as there's the beginner's uh, quest that I have finished, but it will appear here for the first uh, like kingdom starting. And it's the same thing. It asks you to do stuff. It's basically just playing the game. So just pay attention to what it asks you because this will be the biggest boost early game. Quests in general will be how you get most of your reward and will boost you very fast. So just pay attention to it. Now, my second tip is going to be about the map when you're moving around and exploring. As you can see here, there's so much stuff. I just discovered this area. There's a lot of the, this free stuff on the ground. Just go around, pick it up. Now, all of these other ones, obviously, you have to fight these armies. And they're really not a big challenge. They'll consume some of your uh, energy and they'll give some okay reward. Now you can't do it all, obviously it's like, it's so much and if you don't have that much time. So I would say try and prioritize the ones who give like a little bit of items or the potions or the rare resources and leave the ones like this one who just has basic resources like gold or this one like who has, uh, like obviously this one has an energy potion, but everything else is kind of like useless. I don't need, you see I have so much of it. So I would say try and prioritize the one who have some items or some potions and especially the ones who have all these rare resources because this is one of the biggest currency in the game it's really valuable but you don't need to rush it all at the beginning if you don't need these resources leave it for later you can come back and kill them even easier with maybe even less units you only will consume a little bit of energy instead of using many heroes because as your heroes get stronger they won't need as many units with them so you'll see that you're trying to basically not overdo like everything in the beginning you don't need to clear all of this right away you can take some time and just clear what you need as you need it it will never disappear from the map so you can always do it later now as well these ones as you see the exclamation points so uh, i don't have many of them available in my map right now but as you explore every kind of zone like this has either one dungeon to clear or one resource to gather so if you look at the minimap it's always these little exclamation point and usually they're going to be scattered around so i have one here and like all of these ones if i export them they would all have one probably so uh, as you can see, it's these little things that basically bring you resource to your map. So if I go here, let's for example, and I click on it, this basically just sends this convoy of 12 uh, crystals back to my base. This is something that the more of this you do every day, the more rewards you get. When you clear the dungeons, they give a lot of really good reward. So just go around your map and look for any exclamation point. Now I have nothing to do right now, like there's none of them cleared and that's perfect. That's how you want it to be. Uh, obviously now I'm going to go explore all of this, I'm going to find some new ones, I'm going to clear them, and until then I can clear probably this one and this one to get all these precious, precious resources. So basically just make use of your time, uh, just don't waste too much energy, and basically this is what brings me to my next point, which is basically hero energy, how to manage your energy every day. Obviously every time you kill one of these monsters, every hero you send out will be one energy consumed. This is the energy, you see they all have a lot right now because uh, when you level them up they gain an extra one but you see my Grimms for example only has one energy left now if you click here it says right here one out of six and then you will recover one for, for one hour 49 minutes I'll get one more energy and basically the more of this statistic the stamina the more you have the more energy they go to so eventually you could have like 20 energy per day and you could be using them a lot now of course what I would recommend is Try and use a few of these commanders that have a lot of energy and drain their energy to clear everything on the map. But if like some of these champions that are much stronger, like my Jark and like this Virgin and stuff, I don't want to use all their saved up energy right away. So I try and do all the, the mundane, boring little like monsters on the map that are very weak and don't need my strong heroes. Try and use some of the heroes like these ones that I don't really uh, plan on leveling up right away and they're kind of weaker. So make use of this energy. So deplete their energy completely before you use another uh, champion and then deplete that champion's energy completely instead of using all of these guys because while they're maxed out like this, like see my Avalon has 44, 
44 hours at 7, he's not recovering anymore. So all this time, he's not using this uh, like free recovery of energy. So that's why I'm saying deplete a few of them so that at least you're using this uh, system of recovery. And every day when you log on, deplete the same guys over and over while keep your big guys that have a lot of energy accumulated from leveling up. Like leave them alone for a while because if they eventually you're going to need their energy and you're going to be using them in content that's actually hard and needs these champions. So basically just try and like manage your energy properly when you fight all this open field stuff just use like some less strong heroes that have energy that you don't care about and just make sure to deplete them every day so that you're not wasting all this free energy because the potions eventually are quite valuable so my next tip is going to be about the heroes so at the beginning everybody gets the same heroes so avalon avril vega virion gazel and grims now these are kind of the starter ones uh, virion is the last one you unlock by basically uh, reaching the Valor uh, required or the Honor required to unlock him. But all of these are basically the free to play. You don't have to do anything. You will get them no matter what you do. Now, of course, as you can see, uh, all of these guys, these four guys are humans. And is basically this one is undead and this one is a uh, dwarf. So I would say that for most players, especially free to play, you want to focus on the human uh, faction at first. Because as you see in their abilities, like uh, Vega boosts the Priestess, um, if you go here, he boosts the Swordman, and now if you go to Avalon, he boosts the Archers. So basically all of the units that is the human race, they boost. Now, of course, Gazul boosts like some of the Skeletons, and Grimm's here boosts the Tanks. So that's the Dwarf race, if you go here, Tank Mastery, as you can see. And obviously, if you go further down, all of these unlocked, uh, well, not unlocked champion will eventually boost other uh, factions. So, like, all, like she boosts the uh, Lich uh, Spiders, uh, he boosts, like, more mech, she boosts the uh, Rocket Launchers. So, as you can see, you will not be able to boost the units of the other race until much later when you've unlocked the heroes that go with them. So, of course, if you're not going to spend money, it's going to take you a while to unlock every champion in the game. Now... You have already all of these champions who are human and you already boost three of the six units from the faction and those are some of the best units already that are boosted. So I really recommend trying to focus on human, uh, especially Avalon and Vega. Vega's ability here, as you can see, it's a favor of the Sun God, basically heals everyone in the area and the entire map when you fight with her. This is probably one of the best healing ability for a long time. And Avalon also increases your basically troop. He can deploy three troops instead of two and eventually your supply cap. Plus he boosts the archers, he boosts the HP of all humanoids, which is all the human uh, units basically. So these guys are very strong early game for human race. You start as a human. I would recommend not switching for a little while, at least until you know more how the game works and what you want to do in the future, what aspect of the game you want to focus on, and if you're going to spend or not. Uh, all the races in this game are very viable. But you see, this one the, is the icon for humans. So when you go around, you can see which ones are which. So I'll just go around like this. So that you see they're all human. Now, I'm going to probably make another video in the future trying to go through the human race in general and all the abilities and the commanders you should focus on and which ability to go for when. Now, one of the most important tip to do in this game is uh, you need to join a house right away. Uh, basically, this button right here. Now, I am in a house, so obviously uh, I can't join one to show you, but it's very as soon as you click this button, you'll have a list. Try and join the top house in your kingdom that has the most cities as possible because the amount of cities you have give you reward every few hours. As you can see, I could collect all of this for the resource that's shown. And if you move your city to one, uh, your own city into these cities, you will get extra reward for being part of that city. So that's something that's very important. Um, as well as the help here, uh, you basically help all the allies. Boom, you get some time off of your construction and you get these chests every day. So, I mean, it's very free and very good uh on top of it you have like all the activities so you can see what your alliance is doing and the members you can go around and click borrow here so you can basically ask them see i'm asking for gold units so that i can do the void with them it will help me be stronger and you can do it as well for any other encounter so like alliances or house are the most important thing in this game it's basically how the whole game is run it's how you get to vote for kings it's how you get to uh, get some special tiles in these cities like if i look here you'll see in the city that i'm in now i have a tile here that i get 100 percent gold uh, resource so it's like this one you basically double the amount of uh, generation you do in your city and you can also click on other players like i'm doing here and defend them see i could defend this guy instead so basically your army will help them when they get attacked 
So it's it's very very important. This game is based around alliances, which is a house called in this game. So this is a very very important stuff. You really need to join. It's you need to be in a house, else you're not playing the game. Now for the next part of this guide, I want to focus on city management, how you can maximize what you are doing. So before I do that, I should go in the shop here and just let you know. So when you want to spend in this game, you don't have to spend and you can still enjoy this game completely free to play. But if you are going to spend a little bit, this, the patron, and if you go here, the subscribing patron, um, they are probably the best value for your money. If you're not going to do any spending but this, will already get you very far. Um, one of the reasons for this is obviously all the percentage of uh, faster training and the building queue limits and this, the free rush 10 minute. Now, if I go here and I show you, there's another one, free rush 10 minute, they stack. So basically by having both of those, you're spending less than $5 and you have 20 minutes of rush on everything. Now you get some linear for free, you get some potions, you get army cap and you get more upgrade and building queue. So. What this means basically is that I can go in my castle and queue up buildings like this over and over. So see, I have one hour 58. Now you can see I've already done this. So two, like one, two, three, four, and this is already building. What does that mean? That means that if I'm going away for 15 hours, or if I'm going to bed, all of this is going to queue and build while I'm asleep. Now just make sure that you have enough resources to cover their cost because else it will just stop and that's not good. But it basically means that all the hours you're not online actively doing stuff, this will be done for you by itself. Now that's extremely valuable and it's like I said, less than $5. So this is very, very important if you're gonna be uh, serious in this game. Now my 20 minutes extra speed up, uh, there are so many ways where that's useful. First of all, if you're training troops, see, I can train troops here up to like 18, 19 minutes. See, now I'm at 21 minutes and I have to rush one uh, minute 37. If I remove this, all these troops are free to rush. Boom, seven units like this. And you can just keep going. Obviously, now I'm over capacity, but you can just keep going. See, I can just train, 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 train over and over. And I basically just get troops for free. So eventually, when you get the gold units there, some of them take hours to build. But at the beginning, all the units will, like, will take a few minutes each. So you can be training tons of troops for completely free. Same for these guys. If I wanted to build them, it would be completely free. Time. Like I can just basically spend a few minutes building up and I can get an entire army out in no time at all if you're losing and fighting war and it's very cheap units so at the beginning it will really help you. Don't bother if you're going to lose some uh, silver and the bronze troop in the uh, fighting in the open field or even if you're doing a bit of war with other players it does not matter. You're going to have so much of this to basically just rebuild so quickly. Now, the other aspect where it's very good here, you see, I have 36 minutes left on this building. Now, if I want to rush, it will only cost me 16 minutes of rush. Now, I'll just do it for the sake of the video. You can see, boom. So basically, the 20 last minute were for free, and I got to rush all of the, the 16 minutes, just costing me a bit of my speed up. Now, I have uh, six hours, so it's really not a bad like deal. Now, if I go into research, same. I can rush the nine minutes left for free. Now, the best would be if I was at 20 minutes. Now, I would have rushed 20 minutes. But here, boom, three. Now, my next research, it's an hour long. I could rush 52 minutes. Now, there is, like, when you go and research stuff, you can see, like, the first, like, one, two, three, four, they're, like, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You can rush them all instantly. Then when you get to these levels, it basically reduces by 20 minutes every time. So when you're, like, around and playing, just come, like, see, basically in about 52 minutes if i come here and i press this it will be free so you can get 20 minutes off of every single research uh, first of all it helps you boost the early research very easily very quickly and it basically makes it so that it's a cumulative 20 minutes so if you've done research for days and days and you've like hundreds of researches well it's a hundred times 20 minutes that you've saved it adds up like crazy so this is something you have to be paying attention you can do it for research and you can do it for building as i showed now you can see that i've completed some of my buildings now this one just started you see this green little arrow here or this green little handshake so if you click this basically you're asking your alliance to help you build it now if i click on it uh, basically this is done through uh, the outpost so if you click on the outpost here help can be given to you 15 times reducing construction by 65 seconds so it's like more than 15 minutes off of this and as this building gets higher and higher you will get more and more and basically if you just go in your alliance here this is what this help system is so i'm winning zero out of 15. once this is at 15 then you can basically rush it if you were to rush stuff just wait for that 15 because it's basically completely free so this is a, a really important tip so just make sure that you can boost the last 20 minutes of all your research all your training 
and all your building and it will really take you far in this game for really low cost it's probably some of the most important stuff it really helps you build an army at the beginning without any cost at all so this is very important when you're doing your city this is really like the core of value for free now while we're in the city this tactic school this is a really important building for a very free reward now once it's level three you can unlock this which is extra reward uh, but the tactic trainer is the basic one so i'm at level two as you see i've done all of these levels already and it goes it goes higher and higher i'm not high enough level but it goes to very high and you see every level that i would do like look at these rewards potions like this like this is like all extra ability 90 of this like i need all these resources at the beginning i'm starved for resources when i'm building and these I, like this is a really good item for the beginning like all of this like potions again now this item is pretty good like and the further you get the harder it gets but also the better the rewards get uh, and you can see if you click on it it shows you what you're going to be fighting against so obviously this looks a bit scary for now but i'm i'm getting pretty strong so i could probably beat them uh, and also some of the quests and daily quests ask you to do this. So this is something you have to do. It costs energy, but that's it. So as you attack it, oh, here we go. I can send all of these guys with the energy. I was saying earlier in the video, this is when you want to use some of your strong champions. Now, the energy is the only thing that gets drained, but like everything else, there's nothing that gets drained. So like, I'll just do a test here. Let's say I'm sending a few of these units. Now I'm much stronger than them, so it won't be too scary. I'm just sending some random stuff just to show you. All of these abilities, they usually cost mana or energy. Now it's free. So you can use all of this stuff without any cost at all. And as you can see, I'm just going through it like very easily. I have some pretty strong champions. Of course, it helps. So it doesn't matter. This is one you want to have your champion that are very strong and they have very high ability. You won't use their mana ability when you're finding like little mobs on the field for no reason. But in this, it's free. So why not? You know, you don't have to spend any mana for it it's just energy and you just use any one energy per day and as you saw i have hundreds of energy saved up so this is something you want to do and you want to make sure to use your strong champion to beat the highest level possible because the rewards are just like crazy like i want to get all this reward right away so i'm probably going to clear it all it's going to cost me i'm going to try and use two and three champion every level with my units the units don't die they don't go to the hospital so even if it says it's dead it doesn't matter it's not actually dead so this is something that it's really worth so much value at the beginning it will boost your income like crazy and you can build so much more with this something else that's very important as well is once you upgrade all these buildings as you see uh, my archery now i can upgrade here so basically that means that i got the archery range level four like i got here and i got the level four it finished building so what happens now all the units that i have you see they're all three I can now take them and upgrade them to the next rank. So this is, if I show you here, look, they all gain 400 damage and 130 HP. So this is a very valuable. You can upgrade them all at once. And I would do it without a doubt. Like you just have to, because this is basically how your units get stronger. And you can click the arrows here to navigate uh, between the different buildings. Now you can see all of them at level four. So I have nothing to upgrade. Now this is three. And as you can see, I'm actually crafting it right now. So in five hours and 20 minutes, I will be able to go in here and upgrade these uh, knights to the next level and they'll gain some HP and some strength so they'll just become stronger. So this is something you don't want to forget. You want to check this out as soon as you're building one of those go and upgrade these units right away. If you don't have enough resources try and at least use the ones that you're fighting with in your army because they will basically make you just stronger in general. So this is very important. Now, one other thing with the city, if you click on the wall here, which also is important to keep upgrading your wall, uh, basically you can see this is a garrison. So this is what your enemies are going to be fighting against when they attack you, all the units you put yourself. So you can basically see, I can have up to 55 troops. Now I can click plus and I can basically take my troops and send them there. Now I'll do that for a few of them because I am currently building up my wall. Uh, let's see I'm doing this so I you see I've sent a few units now I'm at 38 it shows you where they are here so I'm at 37 actually I'm going to send one more of this and assign now obviously you won't be able to get those back so once they're there they're there you'll never get them back so do not put units that you do not want to put there I would not recommend putting your strongest unit at the beginning because you have a few days of shield especially but right now I'm just putting silver troops because I can build them very quickly as I showed earlier as well if you go here formation now you will be able to place them the way they're going to defend. So now let me just zoom out. Here you go. So basically you can choose who goes on the wall. Obviously you need ranged unit. Now the archers are almost always what you want to put, especially at the beginning. They attack very fast, so they're very strong. So I put archers. Now I can put some of this stuff here. You can see like I can basically decide what is going to be 
just defending my city. Now, if you don't do this, the game will do it for you. Uh, it doesn't always do it very well. But uh, if you do it, it will basically mean that if you're fighting against a certain player and you know they're attacking you and they have a lot of knights, you want to put maybe more spearmen. If they're having a lot of range in it, you maybe want to put more uh, these guys. Now, you see I put a hero. Uh, it doesn't work. You see one out of zero. I don't have hero room. So eventually you will be able to. For now, you won't be able. So you want to build up like just a lot of troops, usually tanky troops, and you can put some more archers in the back. Now, this is something that's completely up to you. It will change as the game goes along. Uh, people often put knights in the back to charge the enemy. Now, I'm what I'm doing right now, do not take it for granted. This is not what has to be done. It just shows you basically, I would recommend you try and have as little wasted space as possible so you see here i have an entire line of wasted space now if i use knights and these guys instead i can make it full so again what i'm doing right now not great i would redo it but i would recommend you look up for some guide on this or you basically want to have as many troops with as little space wasted because it will make you a lot stronger when you're defending you can also let the system do it for you but as you get more troop and you get some golden troop you want to make sure you don't put them in places that they get targeted first so this is something you have to pay attention to not early early in the game you have a shield that lasts for like five days but eventually this will be very important because people can attack you and steal all your resources otherwise so this is not something you want to happen and the, they take a lot of time to train and put in the here so if they die you have to train more and you have to heal them in the hospital it's just not something you want to do now, I want to talk about the spending a little bit. So I mentioned earlier in the shop, the Patron here and this one here are the most value. It's This is a subscription, a few dollars a month. Same for the first Patron. And this one here is like the best value. It costs $2 to activate and then it's $7 to reactivate. So it's definitely... It's definitely worth it. I mean, trust me, all of this, especially this basically just means your army can hold more of these units. And especially for the gold one, it's very valuable. And as I said, all this queue time limit, it basically makes you be able to do so much when you're not at home and not active and sleeping. So this is the number one priority. If you're going to spend at least a little bit, this is where you're going to get most of the value. It's crazy. Now, this middle one unlocks when your castle is 10. It's a one-time activation for $15 and basically gives you linear every day. And it makes you so that you can do a lot of your stuff like automated and you can speed up the fights. So it basically is kind of a huge time saver. It's going to basically help you save time, but it's not... Uh, by, like, the value is not crazy. This is uh, I would still recommend you spend it because the 50 Lenari every day, if you're going to play for 100 days, it will be adding up for sure. Now, on ter in terms of other stuff, this shop, as I said uh, in my other video before, is basically kind of like a daily reset and it has random stuff for gold, for Lenari. This is not somewhere I would spend at all at the beginning. Eventually, you can use, like I said here, uh, this was for gold. So gold is a currency you can farm. So if you're turning these gold into a resource that will make your champion stronger, it's very worth it. You can even buy these items because it basically means you're going to be able to transmute and get some free stuff like that. Sometimes there's speed up for gold and again, more items for gold. So I would recommend maybe not at the beginning, beginning because you're going to be a bit starved for gold for all your research and building. But as you go, gold will get very easy. You're not going to miss gold. Gold is going to be something you're going to have a lot of. So try and use the gold here to buy the stuff that you can now don't buy this i don't think this resource is worth gold like it's a resource for another resource but this resource is also very easy to farm so i wouldn't buy it but you know you can just check for good deals it can be worth it here chess uh as i said earlier like this token that you get in the daily quest basically will enable you to unlock these champions so this is not somewhere you can really spend but if you were to you could transform your linear into these tokens and this is how you would basically unlock champion if you do 40 of these chests, you will 100% unlock this champion. So try and save them up until you can do 40 because these are the ones that you will really want. Like the champions, this is how you're going to unlock them. Uh, it's not something you have to rush for, but this is somewhere that spending your Lenari can be worth it. And as well, if you want to buy Lenari, this is where you would do it. I wouldn't recommend it at first. It's not the most value, but it's something that can be done depending on what level of uh, well you are. Now, here is kind of like where the sets are worth it. Now, all of these sets, they will always be available. They always reset. Once you buy one, the next one will be more expensive and give more reward. Uh, and you also have some champions at the beginning. So this is how I got my champion. I unlocked this because I know this one is a very, very strong champion. And it's not one of the ones spending I want to do in this game. So I got this guy. And this is kind of like a special deal. One-time reward. Uh, I got the first three packs. Uh, but I'm not going to buy this one just yet. 
But they basically give you all the speed ups and some extra stuff for dragons, extra stuff for champions, runes. It's basically a all pack. It has all kind of reward. So this is like the beginner's pack that you can buy. It's something I would recommend. Probably has the most value and it gives you also Lunari right here. So this is one of the good sets that you will want to buy. If you are going to want to boost up, this is one of them. Now the stash here, this is basically resources every day and a bit of Lunari. It's quite cheap. It lasts seven days. It's definitely worth it, but... I, I am not going to spend on it just yet. One other place you can spend is in here. So this is kind of VIP tier level. So as you see, if I go tier one, I bought a few of them. They're like a dollar every time. And it gives a very big amount of like resources and speed up and Avalon boosts basically for a few dollars. So this is what other I would recommend spending. As you see, I have spent there a little bit. So, you know, I've only spent a few dollars here and there and I've gotten like a few champion and a few of these sets. Now I stopped here. Eventually you can keep doing it. They're not going to disappear. So, you know, if you're going to spend, the patron is really good and the special bundles for new players. Also, when you're starting to build up your castle level, you'll sometimes have uh, extra set that just appear as well as when you level your dragon here uh, a certain level you'll see like these sets will just appear in your screen. It'll just like tell you this is a special set. Now you don't have to buy them all, but some of those are very good value. They're more value than the other stuff in the game. So at the beginning, if you're gonna spend, try and focus on these things. And it's gonna be basically the most value for your game. Now, if you wanna be free to play or if you wanna be very low spender, the patron is plenty enough for the beginning. You'll get very good reward out of it. So my last tip is going to be about the Void Mirror. Now the Void Mirror is one of the most uh, amazing way to get rewards every day in this game now i'm giving a little trick i'm recalling to where my city is it makes me like travel the map quite faster like i don't have to waste all the time traveling manually uh, so the void mirror is here for me now it always has an exclamation dot like this and it will be basically close to your main castle so never like if you're in this faction it'll be close to your main castle there so if you're in this faction it'll be close to your main castle there i mean as you will see it no matter what it'll always have this exclamation mark you click void mirror now you can do this once every 20 hours. Now the first time you enter it, it will take whatever army you have in your dot here. Like if you have these kind of units, it will take all of these units. Now you see I have, I'm missing quite a few units here. So I shouldn't enter the void right now. Now luckily I entered a bit earlier and saved my army. But you want to have like as strong as an army as possible because for the next 20 hours, you'll only have this army to be used. Now this is where you go in your alliance. You go into members. You look at who's very strong and you say borrow. And you say gold for void and you click this to tell them that you will not deploy their units in a way they could get injured and die so basically this will happen and when you get into the void you'll have extra gold unit that don't belong to you so if you have very good whales this is going to help you push very very high now if you go in the void like i am here and you go army you see this is what i have reflected troops so i got two out of three you can bring three units total so now i have my own and his. So I have double the amount of gold. Uh, this is going to help me progress a lot further. And I have all my troops here. Now it's not perfect, but obviously it's early in the game. And you obviously all have your heroes. They all start with 10 energy and 10 mana. And that's what they have for the entire duration of the void. So the void is amazing reward. If I click here, you'll see basically for completing the stage, you'll get a reward. And for perfecting it, which is a special thing that the game asks you to do, a special condition, you will get extra reward. Now, you can see I've cleared a bit of it, and you can even get more loot here. But, like, all of these is, like, that's a lot of loot. Like, it adds up, and, like, you know, if I go down, 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 you can see I'm, like, not finished everything. Uh, as you get further down, look at, like, oh, wow, like, linearity, like, all of these at Dimension, which is a currency that you can use in the Void. 150,000 XP. Now, the next level, I can unlock when I clear this stage, and there's, like, so many. It goes, like, into the hundreds. So... Uh, as you can see, I've cleared all of this. So, like, no, I just go around, boom, look at look at all these rewards. Like, you just walk around, and all of this has been perfected, so you don't have to do it ever again, and you just get all these rewards for free. It's absolutely crazy value. Now, there's a tent here that could heal my hero that was injured. Obviously, I haven't fought yet. You can come back to it, though, to heal. And you can see also these little guys. There's going to be a few of them scattered around the void. Basically, this is how you recruit Rufio in the game. Now, I would have to pay him 300 Amantium and I could recruit him. I, I recommend recruiting some of them. Uh, there's different priority depending on who you are. But as you see, I have 390. So I could recruit him. Uh, I'm not doing that just yet because there are some really, really good champion coming up in like level 40 and level 60. So I'm not yet, uh, there yet. But uh, Rufio, you're going to recruit anyway one day. That doesn't matter. Now you see, I've reached the point to where I have perfected every level to this one. Now, 
here i would have to fight this army which i can fight obviously you can see there's just normal archers now the challenge you see no casualties so i have to do this fight without them killing a single one of my unit now sometimes that is just not possible now as you get stronger and stronger you'll have very strong champions and some of these champions will be eventually be able to like kill almost all of this by themselves now obviously i don't think i'm strong enough to do this full not casualty yet but if i use a lot of like archers and obviously gold ones now i won't send these guys because they'll get killed by the spear and they'll just die instantly but I have, you know, some healers and some archers and some really strong champion. Eventually, you'll be able to manage and you'll be able to kill uh, the no casualty level. All the levels in this map will have different challenges. So if I go here and I'll show you a little bit. I mean, obviously, I've done some of the easiest one already. Now, this one is the no casualty I just showed you. So if I couldn't do it, I just wouldn't get this reward yet. It's okay. You can have you can just kill it normally and then get to the next level and do their perfection. And like some of them are basically asking you to have two heroes or less or to basically kill it in a certain amount of time, so basically very fast. Uh, so and every time you do this, you will basically make it so that you have to walk through it next time and you don't have to kill the units. So as you know, I have only 10 energy per hero, so I cannot do so much. I can do levels all day, and when your units die, they don't revive in the void. You'll have to wait 20 hours for the next reset to start again. So I would recommend at the beginning, you focus on perfecting all the levels that you can. Use all your heroes, use the best heroes you have, the best unit you have, and try and perfect them, because every day it's kind of accumulative. You'll have to do less and less, and then you can push further and further. So this is really something that's very important. Perfecting the void and then going every day. If you see here, this is what I've collected so far in this void. Like this, a lot of, for something that I've done only for like three days now, look how many rewards I get every day and if i get to level 80 well it'll be 80 levels worth of reward every single day on top of these one-time reward and every time you walk through it you have a chance to unlock these things eventually they'll become guaranteed so this the void is basically the biggest source of reward every day especially for free to play you can ask your big players to loan you some really strong uh, units i mean and then it will let you breeze through it a lot easier so this is one of the best big focus uh, there are so many guides online and as well, if you want to join the official Discord, it's in the description. This game as a Discord with the company, uh, like management is basically running it with some really good moderators. And you can ask any question. You can have special setup that will tell you exactly how to beat every level. You can borrow certain units specifically just to beat these levels. As the game becomes more and more complicated, you will have access to more and more strategy. Uh, there is so much information and help on the Discord and on YouTube. So make sure that if you're struggling, ask for help as well as you can ask in the comments here and I can try and help you as much as I can. So this is it for today, guys. Basically, just trying to go over all of the basics. Now, I, as always, I'm, I've am i been playing this game for a while in the past, but I just restarted, so I am kind of getting refreshing on uh, how to play and like some of the strategies. Uh, I'm using the Discord to uh, inform myself because there's some really good people in there, as I said, as well as you can ask in the comments or in our personal Discord for Nut Casuals, and we're going to always try to help you with everything that we have. So just uh, make feel free to ask some questions and some suggestions. If there's some content that you would like to see or some things you're struggling with and you need a guide for, let us know and we'll be happy to help. So until then, well, thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next time.